This is the Bafang 500 watt 48 volt motor on Sandy's e-bike. Started making some funny noises, herky jerky, and obviously had problems. So easy enough to pull the wheel off the bike, pretty much like any bicycle. You loosen the nuts at the frame and slide the wheel up and out away from the chain. And there you go. To work on the Bafang motor, at least this one, I think most of them are designed the same way. You got those screws that you see here that you got to pull out, and they were very tight. Also, the cluster, the chain sprocket cluster, sometimes called cassette, a bunch of sprockets. I used this tool, you need one with a hole in it so you can slide it down over the wire, and that pulls the nut, so-called nut, that holds the cluster on. So you need a special tool for that. It's clockwise thread, so you want to turn it clockwise, counterclockwise, to loosen that using, you can do it other ways, but I bought the special holding tool, wraps around the sprockets to hold the sprockets while you loosen that retaining nut ring right there. In this case, I wouldn't have had to do that because I could get to those screws through the various openings in the big sprocket, but I decided to get that out of the way so I wouldn't have to deal with it. So, uh, once you've pulled that nut ring to get the sprockets off, and I would advise it, just get them out of your way, it's easy enough. Then you got the screws to deal with. They're fairly tiny screws that go in here and holds the motor in place. They were too tight, and they will strip easily. Now, if they do strip, you can always drill a screw out, drill down through the screw, and that way the head falls off of the body itself of the screw. You can you can remove, remove them that way. Once once you drill the head and drop, get that out of the way and get all the screws out, now you can remove the remaining part of the screw with a pair of pliers or vice grips. But I went down to Harbor Freight. I bought this impact driver tool. It takes a little finesse. It's a fairly stiff mechanism in there, but the design is there's a cam inside, so when you hit the end of that, the screw driver will either turn clockwise or counterclockwise. You got to make sure you got it set. So you would rotate it in one direction or the other to get it to work in that direction. What I do is to check that, push down on something hard, not, not your motor, but push down on something hard. As you push down on the screwdriver, make sure this tip of it, the rotating part, is actually trying to rotate in the right direction. Then on top of that, you need to compress the unit all the way down as far as you can by hand, and then twist it in the direction of, in this case, counterclockwise to remove the screw, and then hit it with a pretty good whack while holding everything tight. That's almost a two-person job, but I was able to do it because I've done a lot of mechanic work. So that's what I use to pull the, or at least loosen, preliminarily loosen the screws. So now, once you've got that, all the screws out, these motors are pretty slick. The, the holding plate pulls off. There's a, there's a bearing in there like that. I checked that. I don't see any problem with it right now, but I've still have not found any reason for the noise of the motor. Now the motor comes out. Notice the gear, spur gear, straight, straight cut teeth around the outside of the hub in there. Now let's take a look at the motor and see how this works. On, but that's that side. And now this side over here, if I hold on to this, you can see what happens. This planetary gear set is a gear reduction. Down at the shaft level, there's a small sprocket. That's driving these big, big sprockets, so that's gearing down the speed of the motor to the speed of the axle.